Hello, and welcome to the People's Stimulus Check and Stimulus Package Update. This day, September 27th, 2020. Today we are going to do a week in review starting off on September 22nd of this year and that you get all cut up to speed. I would go back a bit further for you guys, but might as well keep it sort of relevant for you so it doesn't confuse me. I sure don't want to confuse you guys. You guys are very important to me. So let's see here. We have Republican Senator Mitt Romney says that he's supporting holding a vote for the Supreme Court Justice in honor of Donald Trump. And then, let's see here. I, 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 these are like all my notes all combined, so I'm sorry if I'm sort of a bit scattered brain on this one. I'm just trying to get it all taken care of for you guys. Um, and then we also have uh, two, two acts out on the table. We have the Heels Act, which is the Republicans Act, which is basically a now it is it was a half a billion dollar act but now it is a 1.5 trillion dollar bill thought of by the problem solvers caucus which includes a second stimulus check more uh, unemployment more ppp as well as other benefits and then we still have the heroes act on the table which is a 2.4 trillion dollar bill and the only difference between that bill and the heroes act is about 900 billion dollars and we also all know that uh basically the heels act got changed to the march to common ground act by the prom Solvers caucus because the heels act was originally a 500 billion dollar act proposed by the senate that had basically nothing in it for the people it just had a bunch of useless crap in it Whereas the March Common Ground Act is one that actually has the second stimulus check with the possibility of a third stimulus check if the problems with COVID-19 become worse. And the basically the House, they, they're also voting on the state and local assistance is what they also wanted. That's what the Democrats wanted, why the, there's a difference in the packages because they want the $2.4 trillion one because they want to give $1 trillion to state and local assistance. And the Republicans, as well as the Problem Solvers Caucus, is always the only way to give half a million dollars for state and local government. Um, let's see here. We have, uh, but in this act, there's also $3 billion in for um, farmers. And basically... He said he, Mitch McConnell said he rejected because it's what the what it's not what the Republicans want. Larry Kudlow was asked if the commie would improve without more stimulus, and he said yes. In fact, he said if it, sorry if it would improve with, without more stimulus, and he said yes. And then Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, as well as Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, had to testify in front of Congress over the next three days, talking about more stimulus and how it's going to affect the care and basically how it affects the CARES Act, which basically was odd because the CARES Act was the first um, stimulus bill that came out that was passed when the COVID nineteen basically became a pa massive pandemic. Which was, gosh, how many months ago? I think it was back in March was when it was passed. And then the Heroes Act was passed in May and was just sitting in front of Mitch McConnell on his table to this day. It still is. Nancy Pelosi is trying to basically slim down the, the Heroes Act from 3.4 to 2.4 trillion dollars. And the Problem Solvers Caucus, like I said, they have the 1.5 trillion dollar act on the table. I think they should pass the 1.5 trillion dollar act. Get the people money they need so they can survive because that's very important right now is keeping us in our houses and keeping food in our stomachs so we can live so we don't let the the richer of rich walk over us like they have been doing for the whole for our whole lives basically let's see here COVID 19 cases have been basically on the rise in the united states since september 9th and pelosi says that she is holding out for the 2.2 uh trillion dollar mark to see if the Republicans will go for a bigger stimulus package, which we probably know they will not. Even though the president, early in the week, 
did tweet that he told the Republicans to go for higher numbers as far as the stimulus package goes, even though he had a uh, his uh, press secretary say that he only meant to go for higher numbers as far as in the HEALS Act, which is originally $500, 000, $500 billion, to add an extra $316 billion to it for stimulus checks. So as far as what he meant by that, we don't know yet. We don't know if he meant to add go bigger numbers as far as the $1.5 trillion March to Common Ground Act or add a stimulus check into the HEALS Act. But let's see here. And then... Basically, uh, Pelosi is wanting $916 billion for state and local government assistance. And the Republicans are saying no to that because they believe that she's trying to use that $916 billion for a bailout for the Democratic states because of all the looting, rioting, and protesting going on that's been causing billions of dollars worth of damage. At least that's what the Republicans think. I'm not... I don't, I think $500 billion is just fine for state and local government assistance to keep the people employed their work for the state and local governments. Then Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin testified before Congress and said the Trump administration wants a second stimulus check and the Democrats in the House of Representatives confirm their commitment to send America a second stimulus check. The Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell also said also testified before Congress that and said the economy needs an additional stimulus package to keep the economy afloat. So we basically have two of the higher ranked people. Steve Mnuchin is the White House negotiation person for the stimulus package and Jerome Powell, like I said, is the Federal Reserve Chairman. Two higher ups both, both saying that we need more stimulus as well as stimulus checks for people so we can keep the economy afloat. And in reality, and also, a funny thing is, is in retaliation against Republican trying to fill the Supreme Court seat, Chuck Schumer, leader of Democrats, invoked the two-hour rule. And what the two-hour rule says is, is if the Senate is in session for two hours or more, well, actually, you cannot be in session for more than two hours, that no meetings can be held. And if they're not in a session for more than two hours, no meetings can be held after 2 p.m., so basically, you got that little thing going on right there. So we got the, the two-hour rule imposed by Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Democrats in the Senate. And the politicians have agreed upon a, the government funding bill. The House was passed by the um, House of Representatives 359 to 57. And that moves on to the Senate. The Senate is supposed to be voting on this sometime this coming up week. Hopefully before the end of this month, because if they do not get it done by midnight on Wednesday, the 31st, there will be a government shutdown. And then, let's see here, I'm not going to explain the, the um, two hour rules, I already sure did that to you. And, let's see here. Suffer. Basically, Jerome Powell and Steve Mnuchin basically said that if we don't get a second stimulus package as well as stimulus checks out there, our economy will suffer with evictions and foreclosures, things that will scar and damage our economy. It will also scar and damage our people as well if they don't get more money so they can put food in their stomachs and keep housing above their head. As well as the CDC's uh, ban for kicking people out during this COVID time as long as they actually have COVID-19 COVID-19 related hardship and have a paper signed and handed in to their landlord. The second wave of COVID is currently hitting Europe and Canada. We have basically currently hit over 200,000 deaths in the United States. And I think our total numbers are about 6.9 to 7 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the United States. And basically, see, as I affirmed you earlier this week about Mnuchin and Powell testifying before the House <sighs> Financial Services, sorry, testifying before the House Financial Services, and then what was this on the 29th? No, wait, not the 29th, the 24th, I think it was. Um, 
They testified before the Senate Banking Committee. Mnuchin basically said that he's expecting a strong third quarter, third quarter gains in manufacturing, housing, and retail. He admitted that some groups and businesses still need relief and that the Trump administration remains committed to providing support for American workers and businesses. And basically, Mnuchin said earlier that day that he spoke to Pelosi 20 to 15 to 20 times in the past few days and about the CR, which is a consent continued resolutions for keeping our government open so it doesn't have it closed down. And they were talking about the CARES Act. Now, why they'd be talking about a the CARES Act, which is a $2.2 trillion bill that was put into play and passed by the president in April, no, wait, March of this year, is beyond me. But, hey, at least this talks about something that'll probably hopefully help out and pan out and pay the people. Because, like I said, we're out here stuff, suffering, starving, and losing homes, and the government is sitting fat on their wallets, not doing squat to help us out quite yet. Our unemployment claims have gone up from 866,000 to 870,000. And the FEMA has about $3 billion left of the $44 billion that was paid out for unemployment claims. That was taken away from them by good old President Trump. He could have taken money out of the Pentagon's overswollen budget of $800 billion to actually cover more extended unemployment than this $44 billion from the famous disaster relief fund, but hey, it's, our, it's the president. He doesn't think straight. Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the Democrats of the House, says she's going to impeach Donald Trump as a stalling tactic so he doesn't put someone in the Supreme Court justice seat. And the Republicans of the Senate say that they are going to have discharge papers written up against Pelosi if she does try to impeach Donald Trump. And basically what the um, discharge papers w w would do is it'd make it so that she could still remain in her seat, but her word wouldn't carry no weight. So they could actually go around her and get stuff passed. And also, let's see here, we have, there's also been Democrats that basically have actually wanted to sign this petition as well. And the doc, and we have a top Democrat in the House that's basically telling them not to do that because if they sign that petition to discharge Pelosi, that it would undermine their negotiation tactics and strengths. And basically, uh, Pelosi said that the Congress will be, go back to their... Basically, she basically said that, they, that the Congressmen are going to stay in the Senate, not to but stay in the House until a bill is passed. And as of recently, she says that she's going to send them home so they can campaign so they can, for their seats. And they're going to be on standby. And yet we have 33 to 34 congressmen who have actually basically demanded Pelosi keep her promise to keep them in session so they can get a bill passed to help the people. We don't know if Pelosi's actually heard that one yet or not. And like I say, Congressman Hoyer, the House Majority Leader, a top Democrat in the House of Representatives warned fellow Democrats to basically not sign the petition to discharge Pelosi because it weakened their negotiation tactics and strengths on the stimulus package. Hoyer said that let's vote on the next stimulus package in the next 10 days because on the 9th of October, they're supposed to, be supposed to go on their next vacation. These people in the Senate and House of Representatives take more paid vacations than anyone else on this planet does. I mean, if you've been keeping track of so far, let's see where they had a vacation for the 4th of July. They had a vacation in, I think, August. And they're having another vacation in October that doesn't get over until after the elections. And they're getting paid for all this by our nice taxpayer dollars. Aren't we so nice of us? And uh, let's see here. I don't want to take this on too long because, you know, I'm, I don't want to bore you guys. You guys are very important to me. But I do, I do got something for you. A question for you here. Okay, we have Trump out there saying he's going to send out 33 million Americans a $200 discount 
card to help them cover the copay for their prescriptions. That is going to cost about six trillion, about six billion dollars, on average. Do you actually think that Trump is right in doing what he's doing, or do you think he's trying to buy the vote, the uh, voters, this especially the senior citizens' votes, so he could stay in office? Because we've already known that he's already said that he will contest and take it to the Supreme Court if he loses the elections to Joe Biden. I'd actually appreciate your guys' opinion on this. So if you could please be kind enough to leave me a comment of what you think, whether him he's if whether he's actually doing this out of the goodness of his heart or if he's actually trying to buy the voters, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. And let's see here. That about really covers it. I mean, like I said, Trump is basically trying to get someone uh, uh he Trump's already assigned the Attorney General of the United States. Now he's trying to sign the Supreme Court justice for the Supreme Court. I think and this is another qu question I want to have for my viewers as well. I think he's trying to stack the house in his favor so he can actually, because earlier when he was president, he said that he could, with this attorney general in his pocket, he could walk up to someone and he could put a bullet in their head and he can get away with it. Do you think he's trying to stack the house so he could do illegal stuff and get away with it? Or do you think he's trying to actually help out the American people? My opinion says he's trying to stack the house so he could do something nefarious because, come on, you have, you have an attorney general and a Supreme Court judge in your pocket. That tells me that you're not thinking too legally as far as the people go. And plus, what happened to the $300 billion he found that he was supposed to send out a second stimulus check to the people that has yet to materialize? I would like you guys to comment on these three questions, if you, if you don't mind. But for now, I will end my broadcast because it is getting pretty long. It's almost it's a little over 17 minutes now. So please um, give me a comment on those three topics if you want to. And until next time, you guys have a fabulous Sunday. And I will send you out a new broadcast tomorrow stating all the information I find out for you guys that is relevant and very important to you to help you guys survive. Until then, you guys have a wonderful night. Bye.